Morning everyone. Today's hot topic is sailing. Why do people sail? They sail for the camaraderie. They sail because they're going back to nature because uh, they're out in a beautiful environment. They find it thrilling. But more than anything, I think people really love competition and they love moments like this. The owner of that amazing boat, J109, is a friend called Andrew. And I now crew for him on a smaller boat called a Shrimper. Uh, it's a bit less full on than his J109, but it's still exciting and very competitive. But what happens when you've been very wet, very cold, and sometimes very frightened once too often? Well, this is where model yacht racing comes in. You get all the competition, but you stay warm, dry, and relatively fearless. So let's have a look at model yacht racing. So I'm a member of Pool Radio Yacht Club, which is a beautiful club and I'm very lucky in where I live that literally a mile down the road is a model sailing club set in the beautiful pool park uh, very close to the sea and very close to the centre of pool town and we have a very active and thriving club. We have uh, over a hundred members and we sail every day uh, in several different classes and uh, I'll just show you a couple of bits of video that give you a feel for the club, the clubhouse uh, and the setting and the location that it's in. So this is the clubhouse and you can see uh, this is our wonderful pool park yacht basin for our model yachting. And we can sail either side of that walkway, but this is the main area that we sail in. And that's the bank that we walk up and down when we're racing. These are the trees and the embankment where the railway is. It creates a lot of shelter and makes the sailing tricky sometimes. So this is the clubhouse where we store all the boats. Uh, these are mostly the eight meter boats. As you can see here there's one big a boat at the end there you see how tall that is and uh, yeah all our tools these are the boys that we put into the lake uh, to mark our courses uh, there's some scale boats here and one or two of them uh, these are the one meter boats like that yellow one there they're a bit faster than the eights and there's uh, a scale boat there a couple of other ones a little um, airboat there, like the Florida Everglades. Uh, that's a really big boat, is a sort of container ship. And this is the famous trolley where all the uh, racing gets sorted out and where we record the course and the names of the people who are racing. Here's some tools to sort the boats out. Uh, there's my boat at the end there with my cap on top of it. And this is the uh, sort of social part of the clubhouse and you can see we have a little kitchen and uh, we have all the sort of basics that we need a couple of fridges don't have any running water but uh, we may do and here are the boards that give the results and the boats for sale and some of the trophies so at pool radio yacht club we sail every day of the week and we have four different classes we have the top of the tree, which is the one meter boats, which you can buy for a sort of four or five hundred pounds, 
but to be competitive you need to spend maybe two three four thousand pounds um, and it needs uh, quite a lot of knowledge and experience because these are uh, fast boats that um, are the top of the tree as I say and people race them all around the world um, uh, it's a much more serious racing but that's fine and uh, you know people really get into it and it's their thing um, beneath that there are uh, another international class which is the laser class which is roughly modeled on a uh, dinghy laser full-size laser laser dinghy uh, and uh, they they are not too expensive about five six seven hundred pounds for a new one now um, and we sail those as a class uh, and then uh, a class that we're just going to bring in after the lockdown is a new uh, boat to us called a uh, Dragon Force 65 uh, which is a uh, ready to buy off the shelf boat uh, it's sort of plastic boat uh, with uh, a set sails and um, uh, that's a really good way to get into racing and we're going to try and uh, promote that within our club especially to bring new people especially younger people into the club um, that boat is a one design which means that everyone's boat is the same so you can't spend lots of time and money um, developing a boat and uh, fiddling with it to try and make it go faster everyone has the same boat and that's how you sail and then finally in our club we have the eight meter boats which are the boats that I mostly sail which again are a one design so they are sort of based on an old um, sailing boat um, uh, from I think the turn of last century uh, and they have a sloping keel on them which is good because if there's any w weed in the pond uh, or the sailing lakes then obviously the boat can ride, uh, ride over it without getting caught um, but they uh, are, are really good fun boats they don't sail as fast as the one meter but because they're a one design it's the same uh, for everyone so it's down to the skill of the uh, person uh, helming them so that's the boats that we sail so uh, you just need to know a couple of the basic uh, rules of sailing before we look at some videos uh, and uh, for the model boat sailing it's like full size in that uh, a boat on a starboard tack has right of way over one on a port tack so uh, a starboard tack boat for example has the wind coming over the right hand side or starboard side of the boat and obviously vice versa for port uh, also a boat which is nearer to where the wind is coming from the windward boat um, has to give way to a boat beneath them which is the leeward boat which is further away from the wind a couple of other things the uh, class that I sail the eight meters uh, the boats must not touch the marks at the start or the finish line but they can touch the marks that you go round uh, during the rest of the course whereas in one meter racing you can't touch any of the marks and if you do you have to serve a penalty turn um, similarly uh, there are other rules so for example when you are coming near to a mark to go round it if you are within four boat lengths of the mark and you're inside another boat but the nose of your boat uh, is uh, in line with some part of the uh, boat that you're uh, approaching then you have a right to stay between the mark and that other boat um, and they must give you room at the mark for you to go round the mark uh, safely uh, so those are the basic rules and you can bear those in mind as we look at the racing so here you can see two of the boats uh, that we sail at our club on the left here is the one meter so it's clearly taller than the eight meter to the right of it um, and on the one meter you can see it has a number of different adjustments that can be made to the uh, mast and to the sails and all different settings you can play with uh, you can see here that it has a, a long straight keel which ends up in a bulb uh, weight at the bottom uh, that pot there is for the radio control gear that goes in there um, nice deep rudder on it and if we come around here we can see the 8 meter which is the one that I sail most of the time uh, these are heavier and not as tall as the 1 meter so they're slower um, 
but uh, they are a fun boat to sail and because they're one design everyone has the same issues to contend with. So again uh, there's a little bit to adjust but not very much um, and here is the pot with the radio control and if I just undo that you can see down there the battery and you can see the lever arm that works the winch and if I pull that right in you can see the sails come in and out if I let the sails out and then pull the winch in you'll see it slowly pull the sails back to the middle and the jib and the main come in together and here is the rudder at the underneath there worked from the transmitter here so this is the rudder control and this is the control for the sails and uh, we can screw this lid back on and using a handle we can take our boats and um, to put them in the water. Okay that just gives you a basic look at an 8 meter and a 1 meter boat. So we'll have a look at uh, some of the racing now and I'll show you some pictures of these boats and we'll look at a couple of videos and analyze them. So we're going to have a look at uh, a race uh, for one meter yachts and it was on a really nice day, quite breezy. Um, the wind was coming from the north and uh, you can see that from this little plan there is uh, the walkway uh, that goes around the lake. Uh, up on the uh, path at the top you can see the helmsman and the race officer and it shows you the layout of the club etc. And uh, so on this particular day, the race was from the start line at KB. They then beat up to uh, mark F at the top of the lake before then turning to go across to the wing mark E, down to B, the downwind mark, for beating again back up to F. And then finally heading downwind all the way down to K, rounding K, and then heading back up to the finish line, which was between L and C. All the boats were approaching the start line on a starboard tack, some near the windward end of the line and some like 85 down at the leeward end of the line. Notice that boat 14 had its sails flapping to go slowly before the gun fired and sheeted in and the boat heeled over just as the gun was being fired. Boat 4 made a great start at the upwind windward end of the line pretty much on the gun. After watching carefully definitely boat 85, probably boat 14 and maybe boat number 4 all made uh, false starts and cross the line just before the gun but it's very difficult when you're there on the bank to be exactly sure when things are happening in real time. So I've shown the start again and this time you can notice most of the fleet uh, go off on a starboard tack uh, led by number 85 but two boats that started at the back have quite wisely decided to take a different option to the rest of the fleet because sometimes it pays to do something different to everyone else and they've gone off on a port tack and you can see them heading up towards the houses and the far bank. So, so I'll show you the uh, last few seconds of the start again in real time. White boat number four has right of way on starboard. Boat 85 doesn't on port, but 85 is far enough ahead to get past 
0.04. In one metre racing, boats must not touch the mark. If they do, they serve a penalty turn. In our 8 metre racing, then we are allowed to touch the marks apart from the start and finish marks. Bit hard to tell from here, but it looks like 14 cut inside number one at the mark here, not leaving number one much room. Here the leaders are coming round the wing mark at mark E before heading downwind to mark B. You can see the boats turning in a direction that allows them to go goose winged with the jib out one side and the main out the other which allows them to take more power from the wind. The leader 85 is rounding mark B to port. When boats get within four boat lengths of a mark, they have right of way to ask for room to go round the mark. Uh, and here, uh, boat 01 has, by look of it, uh, an overlap on boat 82. So he has the right uh, to stay inside and go round the mark before 82. But what happens here is that both of them seem to go a long way past the mark before turning, allowing 04 to nip in on the inside. Of course, 82 didn't have much choice. He couldn't turn up into the other boat. Here, the leaders approach the upwind mark again, mark F. They're heading straight downwind to mark K. The leader, 85, is just about to go around the last downwind mark. Notice how he swerves just to uh, make sure he doesn't hit the mark at the last moment. Here, 58 and 14 get in a tangle when 14 tries to cut inside number 58 and 14 pays the penalty of getting stuck in irons on the mark. And beating up to windward, the leader, 85, races hard for the finish line. So 85 wins a well-fought race with number 10 second and 82 third. But was it a fair start? We shall never know. Hard to tell. And that gives you a feeling of how close and how competitive a one metre race is. So this is a race for eight metre boats and uh, the wind is from the southeast, quite a nice breeze uh, and you'll see uh, the start line is from uh, marks D to F and we're going to watch the race in normal speed and then we'll watch it again uh, and analyse it with some slow motion. So let's take a closer look at that start. Uh, the start line was D to F. And we're going to look at it in slow motion and analyse each part of that start. So most boats were on a starboard tack as they approached the line, with the exception, I think, of 69, which was on port.
So before the start, we can see that 69 is on a port tack and comes across in front of all the boats that are on starboard, who are all trying to go slowly, waiting to be in the right position to start at the upwind end of the line. I think also we can see 86 is going to make a good start on the port. Uh, sorry, he's on port, uh, but he's at the starboard end or leeward end of the line. 71, 99 and 56 all arrive at the port end of the line a bit early and tack on to port, but are then upwind of the other boats. 69 and 86 are looking good when the count gets to one. And 69, I think, may have just made a false start. It was very close and very hard to tell from here. 71 made a good start and is now on a port tack at the windward end of the line and in a good position compared to everybody else. 69, 86 and 71 all made a great start, but the others already got caught in a wind shift and got held by the line and started long way behind those other three boats. Just notice how uh, 88 was trying to duck under the line to start, but just missed doing that and ended up having to do a circle uh, round to start again. Finally, just notice how uh, 56 and 72 get tangled up together and end up having to do a pirouette stuck to each other before they can eventually go over the start line. So I'll show you one more eight meter race start. I'll show you three versions. One at normal speed, but with the sound off. One in slow motion and then normal speed with the sound on. This time in slow motion, look out for boats 99, 69, 88 and 70. And remember, starboard tack has right away over port tack. Now, for those of you who think that messing about with model yachts is uh, boring and not for them, well, it can get quite competitive. So I'm going to show you now in normal speed with the sound on and listen to the commentary. Good eight, 69. Come on, oh, come on you guys! Oh, yeah. I had to turn there when I didn't want to. It wasn't my fault. So that's given you a look at uh, model yacht racing. I hope you found it interesting. Um, we have a lot of fun down at Pool Park. Uh, if anyone wants to come and join us, that would be great. And we've got the new class of Dragon Force 65s coming uh, once we can get back out there. Um, I'd like to uh, give some thanks at the end of this to particularly to Mike Millard who's a local guy who's a very good photographer that gave me uh, the race uh, videos to analyze 
and some of the still photography and to my friend Andrew who gave us those wonderful photos at the start of this video. I'd also like to thank all my uh, fellow sailors at Pool Park and um, apologies if uh, uh, I've shown any in, uh, in a bad light. I didn't mean to and um, uh, you can see that we have a lot of fun and it's quite spirited racing. Uh, but we all have a great time and we're all good friends. Um, so that's it for this uh, video. Uh, come and join me again on uh, Phil's Fun for Fogies. Um, so take care, stay safe and uh, cheers.